All right, Shalom. This is your brother Nahalia from the GMS Orlando camp. I want to start off by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rukakudash, the bondage to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, who are the elders of Yasha Allah, and a sincere salutation to all Yuakim, who are preaching this word and believing this word, and to the Aquath, who are believing this word, in all truth and in sincerity. Yahweh is the name of the one they ignorantly call God. Yahweh Shai is the name of the one they ignorantly call Jesus. Bahashim is in the name. Raka is spirit. Kodash is holy. Akyam is brothers. Akwath is sisters. Shalawan means peace. Yasha Allah is Israel in ancient Paleo Hebrew. This is Psalms chapter 126. And I'm going to start at the top. And it reads When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then said they among the heathen, the Lord hath done great things for them. All right, and I want to go into a lesson on that. You know, as bitter as it may be right now, one day, Lord willing, this is going to be like a dream unto us. One day, we're going to look at this time and it truly is going to seem like a light affliction compared to what we have gained. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. You know, and it's a it's a beautiful situation through the spirit that we're able to understand through the spirit and Pavi by Shemel Shai, why we were here, and most importantly, that this is not our final destination. You know, and there is a bitterness that comes with having patience and suffering. All right, being patient breaks down to suffering. All right, and that's ultimately what we're doing through the spirit. But there will come a time we'll be able to look at this moment. We'll be able to look back at this time period what it actually is you know it's, it's, it was just a temporary moment it was a moment of affliction you know it was a moment that the lord punished us you know but with great mercy as the scriptures say he's brought us back home and that's what we're waiting for you know through the spirit and power of hell by shema Shai. you know we're waiting to be brought back home all right and there comes a bitterness with that but at one point soon lord willing we'll be able to look back at this for what it is and that's just a dream you know, a moment in time where we were punished, but now we've been brought back home. So continuing on, verse. Th I want to read this in the NLT. All right. This is Psalms 126 and 1. And it reads a song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. When the Lord brought back his exiles to Jerusalem, it was it was like a dream, you know. And, you know, really, it's a nightmare, you know, in many regards, but. In that day, Lord, when we be a part of that number, we're going to be able to look at this moment as a dream, as a as a moment in time that the Lord afflicted us. But with mercy, with great mercy, the Lord brought us home, you know, and we'll be able to look back at this moment, you know, and, and laugh at it. You know, at certain times, at certain moments in this captivity, it's hard to imagine that sometimes, you know, it gets so tough in the flesh. Yet, you know, the scriptures say what they say for a reason, because ultimately all of these things have already come to pass. We just have to live it out. All right. The Lord said he appointed a time for us to be redeemed. And when that redemption comes, Lord, will we be a part of that number? We'll be able to look back at it and appreciate what the Lord has done for us. You know, continuing. This is Psalms 126 and 2. It says we were filled with laughter and we sang for joy. And the other nations said, what amazing things the Lord has done for them. And that's the uh, balance, if you will. On this side, as a nation of people, we're looked down upon. But in that day and age, all right, Lord willing to be a part of that number, the world is going to look at it from the other side. Not just noticing us at the bottom, but being able to see the journey from the bottom to the top. All right, and the world is going to acknowledge that the heathens especially are going to acknowledge that the nation of Israel, you know, is the chosen people of the Lord. All right, ultimately it takes this judgment for them to realize that. But in that day and age, they're going to see it. They're going to see the great favor the Lord has had upon his people. All right, real quick. I want to see if I can grab this. All right, so this is uh, Psalms 126 and continuing verse four. All right, it reads, turn again our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth 
bearing precious seed, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Now, when, you, when we read this in the NLT, it says, restore our fortunes, Lord, as streams renew the desert. See, history has taught our people that this was all we were ever going to be. And this is all we've ever been is slaves and servants. But this scripture says, restore our fortunes, because at one point as a nation of people, the world acknowledged us as a nation that the Lord favored. Now, that memory has since been forgotten by most people. This is why we're known as the hidden ones. All right. Because the Lord has taken our remembrance from the earth, but now he's restoring it back unto us. And the world looks at us as if we belong on this on the bottom of the pedestal, so to speak. But the Lord is going to restore us as a nation of people. All right. Matter of fact, let me do this. So this is Isaiah chapter 54 and verse seven. You know what? Let me start at verse five. For thy maker is thine husband. The Lord of hosts is his name and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Yahshua Allah. The power of the whole earth shall he be called. For the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit and a wife of youth. When thou was refused, saith thy power, for a small moment have I forsaken thee. And that's what makes this this time period so bitter, you know, that the Lord has forsaken us, man. You know, even the comfort of knowing that we were Israelites as a nation of people has been taken away from us. You know, a lot of our fights are with two thirds of our own people. So in essence, we're a woman that's grieved as a nation of people, you know, only the elect are really sighing and crying and, and are in the house of mourning. Lord, will we be a part of that number? Because it says as a woman forsaken, that's basically saying a woman who whose husband has given her a bill of divorce. Now, in this day and age, women get uh, rewards for that type of activity. But in the ancient world, a woman who has been given a bill of divorce, it was a very a grievous thing for a woman, all right, during that time period. And the Lord's comparing our affliction, our captivity to that same scenario because we don't have a protector here as a nation of people. We are vulnerable outside of the spirit of the Lord. So we're grieved in that sense. You know, there's a spiritual connection that the elect have with this moment in time that makes it more bitter because they understand that we've been separated from our power. And that's that's something in the essence of the elect, in the, in the essence of their spirit, where they understand that we've been separated, even if they can't put it in words. You know, there's a separation that you can feel. Just know, knowing that the Lord has hid his face from us as a nation of people and having this truth through the spirit is the Lord, you know, giving us mercy to a degree. You know, this is the down payment, if you will, of mercy. But there's a, a mourning that happens in this time period because we're separated from Yahweh by Shemel Shai. Now, the beautiful thing about this moment is that we won't always be forsaken, that there's going to come a time period where the Lord's going to show us great mercy and great favor. Lord willing, we be a part of that number. And then we'll look back at this time and it'll be funny to us. It'll be funny that we had stress over, over the bills, over the, the things of this life, over women, you know, over your condition, over the prosperity of the wicked, all right, of the disbelief of the other nations, even your family, we'll be able to look back at those moments and laugh that we were even bothered by it. Now, I want to read this verse right here because this is the most important one because it highlights this, right? You know, it's, a, it's painting a picture, you know, it's saying that the Lord is our husband, all right, and it's also saying that we've, we're grieved, as a woman who has been separated from her husband, who her husband has basically put away, which is a grievous state to be in. All right. But the, the turnaround, if you will, is in verse. Seven. All right. And it reads for a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. Now, the down payment of that gathering is this word. All right. Is having this truth, having this understanding is a down payment to that. Lord, when we're a part of that number, this is the beginning of it. But there will be a physical gathering of the elect. Lord, will we be a part of that number? And just for a moment, you know, if you can, just for a moment, imagine that, you know, being in a pavilion, you know, looking down at the destruction and being able to be relieved at the idea and the fact that, you know, the Lord has redeemed you. And then think about how important 
the problems that you currently have are in comparison to that. And what your thought process would be in that moment. You'd be so overjoyed that you are part of that number. That the things that you went through in this life would be small. Just imagine and seeing brothers, you know, giving all praise and glory to Yahweh Bashim El Shah and the chariots. It'll make everything that you went through in this lifetime seem very small and unimportant and insignificant. And that's why when, when I read Psalms 126, it really hits home because it's like, you know, when you're in it, when you're in the middle of it, of course, the scriptures say uh, not chastening is in the moment. So uh, roughly paraphrasing is not joyous, but grievous. So this life in essence is grievous to a degree. But there's going to come a moment where we're going to be able to look back at these things, Lord willing, and say, man, this was a light affliction. Psalms 126 said we will actually laugh. Our mouth will be filled with laughter. All right, real quick, this is Isaiah 54 and 7 again. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies will I gather thee. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment. <sighs> And that's the bitter part about it, man. That's one of the most bitter parts about it is that the Lord hid his face from us, man. And he forsook us for that moment because of our, our unrighteousness. You know, and it's a it's a that's why the, the wise are in the house of mourning, because this is not the end where much glory doth abide. But there's going to come a time just like it came a time for us to go into this situation. There will come a time where we're going to get out of it. You know, Lord willing, we be a part of that number. And we're able to experience that on the first go round, you know, of that, that mercy being shown to us as a nation of people. But this is temporary, you know, and this is something that, especially on days where it's tough, you got to remind yourself that this is all temporary. All of this is temporary. You know, there is going to come a time in a day, you know, that this is going to be an afterthought. The troubles of this flesh, the troubles of this world, you know, the um, the mortality, the worries about mortality, the fears of mortality. All of these things are going to be an afterthought. You know, and it's ingrained in, into the spirit of the elect. Lord willing, will be a part of that number to gravitate towards that, to look for a new heaven and a new earth where dwells righteousness. And we're going to be able to look back at this and, and see it for what it was. A small, light affliction for our disobedience. But the mercy of the Lord is going to overpower and outweigh everything that we've went through on this side of life. You know, when you understand that through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem al Shah, you know, it brings a slight comfort to us in this captivity. It is our comfort. It's our only comfort in this captivity. You know, but there will come a time when these things will not only be said, but they will be understood. And just like we we know the sky is blue, all right, the world will acknowledge the nation of Israel as the, the nation which the Lord have chosen. All right, real quick. This is Isaiah chapter 61. And I'm going to jump down to verse 9. And it reads, And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. And that's what we're fighting for, you know. In the kingdom, the world is going to acknowledge us as the nation that the Lord has blessed. And even now, all right, in our lowest state, the world gravitates towards the energy of the Israelites. How much more so in the kingdom when they're able to acknowledge why? That's the beauty of it through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemel Shai. And the elect are blessed to see both sides of it with understanding. Because in the kingdom, two thirds will have understanding, but they won't be able to experience this part of the journey. A fight in the flesh with understanding in these last days. And that's why our worst days are our best days. If that makes sense. Because no matter what we're going through on this side of life. Lord, when we be a part of that number, we still have this understanding. You know, we still know the names of the Lord and his son. You know, we're still Israelites. Win, lose or draw. Every day is a good day to be an Israelite. So I just wanted to put this on wax through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shemel Shah because I was meditating on it that this life here is just, it's just a moment. 
it's a temporary situation that the Lord has put, put us in as a punishment, as a correction. But eventually, through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shema Shah, we will be released from it. And we will, we will be able to look back at this moment and laugh. So Lord willing, this was edifying with that. I say Shalom.